This video is brought to you by WoodsongsByRussell.com, home of woodworking tutorials and handmade gifts created in the heart of Eastern Kentucky. For a limited time, join our mailing list for a special discount off your first purchase. That's WoodsongsByRussell.com. Hey everybody, welcome back to the wood shop. We're back here today to make another project that we need around the house. And it's not just a pile of wood either. We need some extra storage. If you're like us, you probably do too. This is going to be a really simple project, a three drawer cabinet. And what we have here is one sheet of plywood that we've broken down into more manageable pieces. And we even had a little bit left over. So if you think this might be good for you, Stick around and we'll show you how to do it. This is going to be a pretty basic cabinet. No bells and whistles, nothing fancy. If you just need a cabinet for some extra storage, probably be cheaper to buy one, but where's the fun in that? We're going to build one ourselves. Now this is your basic sanded plywood. You know, it's not uh, oak or maple or anything like that. If you're going to stain it, you probably want a higher grade of plywood, but we're going to paint this white. So it should be just fine. We'll sand it up to about 220. I think we can get it to look just fine with the basic sanded plywood. We're going to start by breaking out the table saw and getting these things ripped down to size. So let's go ahead and get started. Now we'll start out by ripping the sides. These side panels are going to be 28 inches tall, 20 inches deep. We cut everything oversized. That gives us room to square up on the table saw. Okay, the next piece of wood we're getting ready to cut, this will be our stretchers. There's going to be six stretchers that go across the cabinet from side to side. We're going to make them four inches wide. First we'll clean off the edges and then we'll chop them up into 14 and a half inch sections on the miter saw. Alright, these next pieces we're going to cut will be the sides of the drawers that go inside the depth of the cabinet. These drawers are going to be 6 inches deep, so we're going to rip those down to 6 inches. Alright, this next piece is going to be used for our drawer box fronts and backs. I'm going to clean the edges up on this, and if you can tell, we have uh, cut this one in a wood saving way. So we can use the width of this is actually the length, so it'll be cut across this way, and this will be the lengths of the drawer fronts and backs. Now, in a perfect world, this would be three quarters of an inch. You could do your calculations and get it just right, but this plywood is supposed to be uh, 23 30 seconds and by my measurement it's not even that much so what we're going to have to do is just clean this up for now and on the miter saw get it exactly dialed in a little bit later once we get the cabinet body built. Alright we've moved over to the miter saw we are going to cut out some stretchers for our cabinet We've already flushed off one end of each of these boards. Um, these are going to be cut at 14 and a half inches and we'll need six of them. Two on top, two on the bottom, two on the face of the cabinet. We've got our uh, stop block set up to make it easy for us. So let's go ahead and get these cut out. All 
All right, before we start assembly of our cabinet, we are going to drill some pocket holes in these stretchers, two on each end. We've set our jig up to accommodate the wood um, is 11 and 16 of an inch thick. So let's go ahead and get to work. Okay, we've got one more piece to rip, and the reason we didn't do this one just yet is because we wanted to get the carcass built to make sure the size was exactly right before we ripped the top. Now, the cabinet itself is 16 by 20, and uh, we're going to leave a lip on the front of this to overhang the top drawer, so that'll be all flush there. So we're going to cut this to 16 by 20 and 3 quarters. All right, now that we got the body of the cabinet constructed, we're gonna start cutting out pieces for our drawer boxes. We need six pieces that are 18 inches and six pieces that are, I think about a 12 and an eighth, but like Brian said earlier, we'll dial that in. Right, now we're going to cut the pieces for the fronts and backs of our drawers. Like we said earlier, um, the grain's going to be going a different direction on this. We've taken this over to the miter saw. This is, I think, about a 12 and a quarter of an inch piece of wood. And we're going to cut six inch sections because that's the depth of our drawers. All right, for the next step in the process, we're going to be using this 4x8 sheet of project panel. This is uh, less than a quarter of an inch. It's about 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. And this is what we'll be using for the drawer bottoms and the back of the cabinet body. All right, this section of the wood is what we'll be using for the drawer bottoms. I'm going to rip this now to 12 and 5 eighths. That's the size of each drawer bottom. Now, this will be cut into three sections. We'll do that on the miter saw. Now, the other piece you saw me cut off of that just then is uh, for the back, and we'll rip that to 16 inches wide. We've taken some measurements and now we've moved over here to the miter saw. We're going to cut this project panel at 17 and 1 8 for the bottom of our drawers. All right, now all the parts for our drawers are cut and almost ready for assembly. I'm going to tell you why we oversize these bottom panels just a little bit. That's because they're going to dado into the side panels, a quarter of an inch deep into each panel. Now this bottom panel is about 3 sixteenths of an inch thick, so it'll take a blade width and a half to get the dado cut. And we're going to start a quarter of an inch up from the bottom. Now,
Now we're going to start working on the drawer faces or false fronts. We're going to use this pine board, three quarter inch. This has been in the building for about 18 years since it was built, so we're going to repurpose it. I had it used for something else, and there's some screw holes in it. I think we can get rid of all of that. We're going to edge this off, and it'll wind up being, I believe, seven and seven eighths wide. Then we'll cut them up on the miter saw. All right, now we're going to take these boards and cut them at 16 inches for our drawer fronts. That is the width of our cabinet. All right, we have all the pieces cut for our cabinet. Before we start sanding everything and assembling our drawers, we're going to drill some pocket holes in the short pieces for these drawers. Um, one inch from the top, one inch from the bottom on the exterior, that way they'll be hidden. All right, now that all our pocket holes are drilled, let's sand all these pieces for um, our drawers. It's going to be a lot easier to get everything sanded before it's put together. We've just got some 220 grit here on our random orbital sander, so let's get to work. All right, now we've got all the parts for our drawers cut, sanded, pocket holes are there. We're ready to put them together. But first, I'll explain these clamps. We don't have one of those corner clamping jigs like we're supposed to have, so right now we've got these little pieces of wood clamped in place to keep this wood from pulling back when we drive these screws in. Now it's time to install the toe kick on our cabinet. You're looking at it from the bottom here. This is the front side and we have the toe kick clamped down to the workbench and this way it's probably pretty good and secure and we can get four pocket screws in there. All right, the next thing we're going to do is attach the top to our cabinet and we're going to do that by flipping this over upside down and putting screws on from the inside. We'll put on a little bit of wood glue just for some extra strength. Well now we've built the cabinet, we've built the drawers, it's time to start putting those two things together. Right here we have some really basic drawer slides. You can get these at your big box store. Uh, pretty simple to install. It's basically just a track that mounts inside your cabinet. This part mounts on each side of the drawer. They meet together like this here, and then they slide like that. Now these pieces are marked CR, DR, CL, DL. That tells you which piece to put inside the cabinet. For example, cabinet left, cabinet right, and which piece to put on the drawer. 
drawer right, drawer left. So very easy to install. Let's get to it. Now the instructions on these say to make sure that this track is inset 1 16th of an inch from the face frame. So that's what we will do. We got that marked right there. All right, now that we have the tracks installed inside of our cabinet, we are going to install them on the bottoms of these drawers. Make sure that you have one labeled left and one labeled right. Um, as you can see here, we've got a wheel on the same end of each drawer, so that means we're on the right track. And when you buy your slides, make sure there's screws in every pack. We actually got a pack that didn't have any screws in it. so. I had to go digging for some screws. I needed 12 of them. I think I've got some that'll work. Alright, we took some measurements. And we've got everything measured out where we need our false drawer front to meet with the drawer box. Pretty good technique to use. Just get you some big squeeze clamps. It'll take probably a couple of them. That'll hold it in place until you can get your pilot holes drilled. We're going to screw this down with just some inch and a quarter pocket hole screws. I'm going to put four, two on each side because these fronts are a little cupped and I need to draw that back toward the box. So it'll probably take four of them. After that, time for the handles. For the next step for our drawers, we are going to attach these pulls. We got these on the internet. I think they're cute. And I was afraid when we first got them that they were a little large. But given the size of these drawer faces, I think they'll work out pretty good. So what we're going to do to figure out the center of our drawer face is we are going to draw an X corner to corner. So we'll use that straight edge there. Now we'll measure the distance down to where those two lines meet, which is 3 and 15 sixteenths. We'll make that mark. On each side. And that gives us an axis. Um, to make sure that our pull is straight when we drill these holes. Now we measure the distance between the screws. Center to center. Four inches. Now when measuring from something like this, don't use the tip of the tape measure. Start at an inch mark. So you can start with your two inch mark and measure over to four. And there you go. The next step is to countersink the back of this. The screw head needs to fit inside of there. Probably three sixteenths of an inch somewhere in that range. And the last step, put your screws through. A 
as you can see, we are making great progress on our cabinet. We've got our drawer pulls on. The only things we have left to do are to give this a final sanding, give it a coat of finish, and we still have to put a little backboard on it too. Uh, but we are getting so close and we're so excited. All right, the plywood that we built this cabinet out of is already sanded, but we want to give it just a little bit extra. We've got 120 grit on our random orbital sander, and we're just going to lightly hit this. It is plywood, so we don't want to be too aggressive with it. Just to really smooth it, soften it up, and get it ready for some wood stain. <laughs> to give our drawers a final sanding too. Of course, we've got some marks all over these drawer faces, so we'll sand all that out, uh, make everything nice and smooth, and then we will stain our cabinet. Okay, we're getting close to the end now. It's time to put a finish on this thing. We're going to do that with this Minwax Solid Color Wood Stain in white. But first, we are going to condition our workpiece. Right here, we also have some Minwax Pre-Stain Conditioner. This is especially recommended for softwoods like pine, and it's going to help give us a more uniform color. Okay, now before we get started working on the finish for this cabinet body, I'm going to go ahead and attach the back panel. I'm going to do that with some wood glue and these little one inch wire nails. into the floor. This is a pretty bulky item to try to finish up on the bench. So um, we're going to give this a coat of pre-stain conditioner and then we will give everything a good sanding and start with the stain. Alright, off camera we sanded everything down to 220 grit, made it really super smooth, and we are going to apply this solid color stain. Um, to make this more efficient, we're going to start with the back side of this drawer face, and then we're going to flip it back over on its bottom and coat everything else. We've got a synthetic brush and a foam brush to follow along to wipe up any excess. Let's see how this goes. done with this cabinet. It's been a little bit of a lengthy project. The stain that we use is a solid color stain and this is just a plain sanded plywood. It's pine. It took us about three coats to get the look that we wanted. 
Um, this may not be for you if you don't like the look of wood grain. It is designed to still let that wood grain shine through, or maybe you really like wood grain. They also have it in a translucent so that you get more of that wood quality. All right, next step, we're going to do a finish coat with this polycrylic spray. It's uh, by Minwax as well. It's water-based. We'll coat this down probably a couple coats. After that, we'll reinstall the hardware, and we'll be done. Alright, so in between coats of our polyacrylic, it does say to sand, and we have 220 grit on our sander. That's what is recommended. So let's go ahead, give this a nice light sanding, and we will apply another coat. Well, there it is. Two coats of polyacrylic, we reinstalled the hardware, and we've got ourselves a cabinet. This was a little bit of a lengthy project, but it's really a basic cabinet. Don't mistake it for a filing cabinet. These drawers are not deep enough. They're only six inches, but they definitely um, are going to provide us some extra storage in our bathroom. Um, I really like the style of this cabinet, but if this isn't your taste, Feel free to mix up the hardware, try a different color of paint or some different stain, and make it your own. This will provide great extra storage for any room in the house. If you like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and ring the bell so you can stay up to date on all of our content. You can also check us out on Facebook at Wood Songs by Russell and over on our website at woodsongsbyrussell.com. Until next time, happy woodworking!